images are from the, uh, the Sea of Galilee. And Mike Lemke will lead us as we sing our gospel acclamation. You may sing in your own space, calling our hearts and our minds to attention, ready to receive the gospel this morning. Alleluia, Lord and Savior, open now your saving word. Let it burn. Like fire within us, speak until our hearts are stirred. Alleluia, Lord, we sing for the good news that you bring. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground where they did not have much soil and they sprang up quickly since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some 60, some 30. Let anyone with ears Listen, hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case a hundredfold, in another 60, and in another 30. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The parable of the sower. I'm curious if you have heard this one. Do you know this one? I want to put you on gallery view for just a second. Raise your hand. Have you heard this? You heard this one, right? There's Rocky Ground Isaac, David James. You remember this one? Daggett, the parable of the sower. So there's the path, the rocky soil, the thorns, and the good soil. In parables or teaching stories like this, that's what a parable is, right? A story with a moral teaching story. It can be easy to hear those categories as absolute silos. And maybe we are able right away to start categorizing people. If I was, as I'm reading this list, the path where the birds come and snatch things away, the rocky soil, the thorns, the good soil, maybe you're already thinking in your head, oh yes, you know, that. This is why so-and-so, who, who you know, you know, grew up in the church, but just doesn't go anymore because they just don't understand. They're like the path where the birds came and, and ate up the seeds of faith, and they just don't quite understand what God is offering. Oh, yes, and then so-and-so comes to mind whose faith seeds, if you will, fell on rocky soil. There just wasn't a lot of depth of nurturing in the faith community there, and so their faith shriveled. And of course, there's so-and-so who is too concerned with worldly demands and ambitions, so faith has trouble taking root. And then there's us, 
the good soil, the faithful people where faith has been deposited into good soil, has taken root, and here we are covered in manure, bearing good fruit. It can be kind of easy, even if we don't admit it out loud, to create these silos and start categorizing people. With this parable, I imagine that Jesus was maybe trying to help the disciples understand why the same teachings, the same good news proclaimed from the same mouths landed differently on different people and bore different outcomes. Maybe we have similar questions, right? Especially in our era when there is clearly less of a societal expectation that people would be uh, associated with an organized worshiping body. I imagine the disciples whining to Jesus about people that weren't receiving this good news that the kingdom of God had come near in the way that they had imagined. And I mean, we as church, we've done some of that whining. I've done it as a pastor. But Jesus responds not, hear me, not with a parable about how to change people or how to make them believe or get them to church. You will log into that Zoom service and show up when we meet in person. The parable isn't about that. It's not about changing people. He tells a parable that gives his disciples and us many generations later, but disciples nonetheless, gives us some things to think about and to work on as followers of Jesus. First and foremost, we turn our attention to the sower, not the soil, not the ground, not the thorns, not the rocks, not the good soil even. We turn our attention to the sower in the parable. Now the sower could be, it's, it's a parable, it's a story, right? It's a teaching tool. It could be us, it could be God. Let's call the sower first God. So turn our attention. If you have ears, which I believe most of you do, Listen, God as sower sows many seeds, lots of seeds, and scatters them broadly. As a faith community, we are called to sow the word of God broadly. We are called to scatter the seeds of the word of God like the sower in the parable indiscriminately. Last week, I was on vacation visiting my dear friend who lived in Provincetown. And uh, she decided this past year with COVID and having her kids home, and she's a teacher, so she was teaching virtually, but she thought, I'm gonna take this time to try to plant some garden plots in my yard. But she lives in Provincetown, so that's right, that's the end of the Cape. And her yard is sandy, and she does have some nice trees that provide shade. So she didn't know. I mean, she didn't have a lot of experience, and she didn't have any idea if anything would grow at all. So I'm just going to share with you, because I was visiting with her, I got the chance to see some things that were growing for her. She planted the seeds even though the circumstances seemed less than ideal. And she even incorporated an old wheelbarrow. You can see it right here in this one picture if you're looking at the photos. Something that looked completely useless until it was filled with these vibrant orangey red flowers. And I really enjoyed gazing upon this garden. It brought, brought me great peace looking at these things that my friend Meg wasn't sure would grow at all because the soil was questionable. As sowers of the word of God, we do not get to judge who should get to receive seeds of the word, seeds of faith, seeds of mission and outreach. We don't look and say, oh, that's rocky soil. We shouldn't scatter there. Because our God first has looked upon us, rocky, thorny soil that we may be, and scattered seeds, copious amounts of seeds on us, and showered us with nurturing grace. We don't look at a person or a whole category of people, immigrant, gay, poor, rich, black, brown, white, Democrat, Republican, we don't 
look at a person or a category of people and say, the roots won't go very deep there. That person or group is a waste of time. No. We are called to scatter the seeds of the word of God as God does. We scatter the love of God as God does. We wish to extend justice and equality where God wants it to reach and extend as far as possible. As far as we can possibly scatter. That means we go beyond our walls, beyond our comfort zones. And sometimes we're talking about virtual walls, right? Beyond our presuppositions. We go beyond with the spirit, where the spirit leads us to scatter seeds whenever there's an opportunity. Our council is excited to be applying for Faith Lutheran to participate in a program called Forward Leadership. You'll be hearing more about this in the fall, but the council, along with me, has discerned that it's time for Faith Lutheran to participate in forward leadership, which is an intentional visioning program. So that we might discern what we as a congregation are called to in this time and this space. One of the parts of the ministry that we'll be exploring is our identity as a reconciling in Christ congregation. You know, we made that vote a year and a half ago now, but we want to explore how do we actively scatter seeds of mission in a way that intentionally includes the gay community, the LGBTQIA plus community, and others who have been historically excluded from traditional worshiping communities. How do we do that? So scattering seeds broadly is one of the discipleship tasks that we are called to in this text. The other is to do some work with the Spirit individually and as a community to discover and confess where in our lives we are rocky, thorny, hard as the path soil. In the book of Romans, Paul reminds us that the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set us free from the law of sin and death. He also writes, you are in the spirit since the spirit of God dwells in you. That's freedom and promise there. Freedom and promise and promise like the promises we heard Larry read from Isaiah that God can transform thorns into cypress trees and briars into myrtles. This inspires us to do the work with the spirit of confession and introspection. Where in my life are the seeds of faith being choked? Let's be honest with ourselves and with our God and with our faith community. Where am I shallow? And the, the roots are having trouble getting down in the soil. Where am I dense in my understanding of what God is trying trying to get through to me? Are my political views or my financial decisions cordoned off completely from my faith? Let's be honest. Am I kind to those who are kind to me, but a little thorny when it comes to holding grudges and extending forgiveness? Am I shallow soil, willing to listen and receive when the word is about my salvation and God's grace extended to me, but less willing to listen to the stories and experiences of people who have suffered while I have been complacent or in a place of privilege. These categories of the unfertile path, the rocky soil, the thorny ground, and the good soil are not mutually exclusive. You know, a person or a community can have mixed soil, if you will. And Jesus, through the Holy Spirit, is willing to work with us to identify where we can be more receptive to the word of God in our lives and in our congregation. Doing this internal work with the spirit makes us more resilient as we do the external evangelism of sowing seeds of good news of the kingdom of God. And as always, especially in these moments on Sundays when we gather, but always, we want to be celebrating the ways in which God's word, against all odds, is blossoming and bearing fruit. Where in your life, where in the world is fruit being born? Fruit of joy, love, peace, understanding, freedom, reconciliation, conciliation. May those joys be multiplied a hundredfold to the glory of God. Praise the Lord. Amen.
our hymn of the day references quite overtly this call to be sowing seeds with the Holy Spirit and also acknowledges that we do this together. We do it with the Holy Spirit and with one another in community. Build us up, Lord. Mike Lemke will lead us. up, Lord, build us up, set in us a strong foundation, lead us to do your holy will, form and shape your new creation, build us up, Lord, build us up, as we guide and teach Help us to share your love with the world Every sister, every brother Growing in Christ we plant seeds for the kingdom We follow in faith what's begun But set in our hearts the power of your word the news of your son build us up lord build us up let our lives reflect your glory cast away all our doubts and fears help us tell the world your story us up, Lord, build us up. Help us bear good fruit for you. Lord, give us vision, keep us sure. Grant us faith that's steadfast and true. Growing in Christ, we plant seeds for the kingdom. We follow in faith what's begun what's said in our hearts the power of your word to spread the news of your son 